This is The Sin Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star today's show comes from a viewer out there who actually sent me an email, and that viewer is Krasi Petrov of Plagasm, and he actually challenged me to see what I could do with an Xbox controller, turning it into a button box and various other components. And I thought, I like that. So this is actually part one of what might end up being two or three shows where we see how many things we can steal or use out of this controller to use them as peripherals on our PC. Now you can pick an Xbox 360 wired controller up at a garage sale for probably like two bucks. I found them online for six or seven. In my case, I had this one lying around the house but I had lost the adapter. At the end of the plug was the plug that goes into an adapter, turning it into a USB. And we'll go ahead and take care of that later. But for now, I wanted to describe what my plans were. I wanted two small button boxes. I didn't want one big one with a bunch of buttons. I wanted two different banks or groupings. I figured it would make it that much easier to remember what every button actually did. I wanted one up by my steering wheel, one for driving commands like brake bias or menu screens, things I'll need while driving. And I wanted another one that I wouldn't need as often down by my seat, something to do maybe move the seat position or change my field of view on the fly. So that was the plan moving forward. And I have to admit, this project is actually a couple of years old. And the footage you're going to see of me tearing down the controller was actually done in the old studio. But I got busy with a bunch of other types of shows and this project got shelved until now where we're bringing it back to life again. So my goal was to tear this controller apart to use the circuit board inside. Then I would add buttons and wires utilizing this circuit board, but converting it into a button box. At least that's the plan. Now the parts I'm going to need to finish this project are obviously a wired Xbox 360 controller, some extra wire, a handful of on and off buttons or switches, preferably two post, and something to mount the buttons to. This could be a piece of wood, a piece of plastic or metal, or even an enclosure if I want to make it look like a typical button box. I'll need a soldering iron, some solder, and some heat shrink if I want to make it look pro. So as I mentioned, this was a controller I had lying around. I had just lost the USB. And as far as buttons, I had a handful of those lying around as well. But what I would recommend if you really want to do this on the cheap is to go somewhere like a Mouser Electronics or any online retailer of electronic parts where you can literally buy buttons for like a quarter a piece. You can also buy enclosures. I think I got my small ones for about $4 and 6 bucks for the big one. I harvested the extra wire I was going to need from a 5 foot ethernet cord that I had laying around that provided four twisted strands of wiring, the perfect gauge for my project. And even doing it the way I wanted, using more of an upper end box, I came in under $20 and I still don't even know what all I'll be able to do with this controller. But let's go ahead and get things started and it starts by disassembling the Xbox controller. You'll want to remove all the screws on the back of the controller and this will let you pull apart the clamshell design. At this point, the whole controller will just fall apart in your hands. All of the buttons and levers of the controller are just plastic pieces and we won't be needing them anymore. But I am going to keep them around just in case. I will also end up unplugging the shaker motors. Not sure if they're going to be needed, but I'll keep them around for a while as well. Now we get our first look at the board itself. The triggers have a lever built onto the board with a little cam mechanism inside that is hooked up to a mini potentiometer. It's going to be a little tricky to change that and it might not be used yet. Also there are two buttons on the top that were the bumpers LB and RB. Those bumpers activate a tiny four prong button on the board. That will also be tricky to get to or next level stuff. We're going to pass on that for now as well. Then there are the joysticks, which are serious fixtures of the board. We might be able to put these to use someday, but for now we are looking for the easy route to make our button box. So for our first step of this DIY project, we're going to focus on the buttons themselves and the D-pad, which technically is just another four buttons. What I want to do is turn the contact pads from the A, B, X and Y buttons, the start, the back, and even the Xbox button into external buttons working on the same spots of the board. 
I also want to do this with the up, down, left, and right positions of the D-pad. So how are we going to do this? The way things work on an Xbox controller is when you press on the button, it presses on this little membrane thing that on the back has some kind of a, 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 a metallic-y, at least it's conductive, material that presses on these little circles that we have on the controller board. When it touches the circuit board, it connects the two halves of the circle. And that's when you get your button press in the game. And what I want to do is I want to attach a wire to each half of the circle and then I want to put a button on the end which would basically replace this being pressed to make that contact point. Instead, we're going to press a button to make that same contact point. Now the hard part comes in that these areas of the board are coated with that conductive material but that will not accept solder. So I have to very carefully try to scrape off that coating without scraping off the very thin layer of copper on the board. Once I can see the shiny stuff, I can lay down a drop of solder in that spot and it will be ready to accept a piece of wire. For my wires, I want to strip off one end and then prime it with a little solder. This priming process makes sure the solder is all the way through the threads of the wire and it makes it easier to stick to the pre-soldered point of the board. Now with a little application of heat, I can stick the wires to the spots on each half of the circle. And voila, I have my first set of wires attached to the board. Now before I get carried away and scrape off all the coating and wire, solder a bunch of wires on, I figured it would be a good time to actually test to make sure this whole theory even worked. So I went ahead and put one of the buttons on the other end of those wires just to test things out. And that led me to the USB problem. I needed to add a USB plug to this wire. So I grabbed an old USB cable and cut off the end exposing the wires. I then did the same to my controller to find the same colored wires inside. I primed all of the wires and connected the common colors leaving one wire unused on the USB end. I then used some heat shrink and some tape to make sure that nothing touches and now I can plug it into my computer. Windows immediately found the hardware and once it was installed in the game controllers menu I could see if my button was working. And sure enough. I can see the button lighting up on the screen confirming that it is working. Now I just have to make four more wire connections to the board repeating the steps I used for button number one. So I will use the three remaining spots from the A, B, X, Y and spots and then use the start button to make a total of five. Then I can finish off my wiring, add them to the enclosure and I'll have my first box finished. Now I need to prepare one of the enclosure boxes to hold those five buttons. So I figured out a layout and the spacing and I marked the box for drilling. I will need nearly half inch holes. So I started out with a drill bit, the biggest one I had on hand. And then I kind of flexed the drill bit around, carved it out with the drill bit, carved it with a blade until the holes were large enough for the buttons. When it comes to the buttons and installing them into the box, you need to figure out what type of button it is as far as how it connects to the box and how the wires are connected. In my case, my low profile buttons have to be soldered on before installation. But the hardware and the threads of the button go into the enclosure. So I actually have to add the hardware to the wires, put the wires through the hole I want them on on the inside of the enclosure, and then solder the wires onto the button. I can then place the button in the hole and attach the lockdown hardware from inside. On my other buttons, the hardware goes on the outside of the box. This means I can add the wires now and then put the button into the box and I add the hardware to lock it down on the outside of the enclosure. Luckily, my test button was one of these and I don't have to do anything but slip it into the box and add its hardware. After arranging the wires, and cutting some clearance for my entry into the box, I can close up the enclosure and move on. And now my first mini button box is completed, but I did want to move on to building another one. So for the next one, I'll start with the buttons that are easy to access, like the Xbox button and the back button. And I'll do the same thing, just scrape off the coating, attach my wires, 
and install my buttons. However, the remaining four easy spots to add buttons are the D-pad. And on closer inspection, despite working on the same principle, instead of half circles, there are little squiggly grids. Same principle, but just less meat to work with. So I try to scrape off the coating and, and prime those spots. Fail. Shit, I'll try another spot. Fail. Scrape harder, perhaps. Fail. I don't think this is going to work. I tried and tried, and no matter what I did, I couldn't steal or tap into these spots. I'm losing four buttons as we watch this. So after that failure, I actually had this button box ready to go and two wires ready to turn into buttons, but I just couldn't tap into this D-pad and that was going to change everything. I can't add these to this button box now. There's not even enough room for more buttons. I don't want to make another button box with just two buttons, at least just yet, and I do have future projects in mind. So I think you've kind of learned where we are here, and I'm going to go ahead and hold these two wires, use them for buttons later when we get into our stage two or stage th three of this project, and go ahead and see what else we can do with it. For now, I'm going to go ahead and mount this to the rig. And with it being so small, I was able to just use some double stick Velcro and hold it in place. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug it into my computer, let Windows recognize it, open up my game controllers, open up the Xbox controller, and verify that things are working. And what do you know? They all work. So I'm going to declare this a half victory and a half total failure. We did come away with our button box. We did learn that seven of the positions on this controller are easy to tap into. This probably should have been a seven button box. But again, I was doing this on the fly, learning. Learn that we lose those four for sure. But we did come away with this and we will use these in the future. And we did get the challenge going, which is most important. Now in future episodes, we will tie into other things. That's why I'm not afraid of these not working yet. We got these two four prong buttons on top. We're going to try to get them off the board perhaps, relocate them. Maybe we can make a four button button box and still accomplish our goal of two mini banks. The other thing is we have these potentiometers on the back. I'd love to figure out how to pull these off. Maybe turn this one into a handbrake. Maybe turn this one into some kind of a trigger clutch or something like that. Could have a lot of fun, but we could blow up the board and that's where, why we're gonna leave them for future shows and just walk away with a small victory of a very cheap, very easy to make button box that I accomplished my goals fully on. Just would have liked to have included these two, but we'll find out later. Maybe the answer is to tap into those four pronged buttons and do it that way. So I do want to thank Crassy for sending in the idea. It was a great idea, a great challenge, and I had fun doing it so far. We'll see what we can get more out of this board in the future. If you have any ideas at all for future DIY projects, please email me at sean at thesimpit.com and I'll be sure to add them to the show because everyone loves a good DIY piece. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.